All right, let's check out what's going on with VPad. So I was actually curious to check out how this is going myself, uh, because if you don't know, uh, VPad was initially given out as a free IDO allocation. Uh, so it had an initial distribution offering where basically it minted down here around about the five to six cent vicinity. And, you know, people got free tokens airdropped to them down here. And I was actually one of the people who was taking profits. I remember selling, uh, I believe it was $1.50. $1 and I watched it go up to $2. And then I stopped watching it. But I remember, you know, looking at this at $2 thinking, damn, should I have sold at one fifty? And now I'm checking this out for the first time in a while. And yeah, I mean, it's it's really been on a huge, huge tear to the downside. Uh, if if the, there are those of you who don't know what this project is, uh, VPad is uh, MM Crypto's token that he made. It has it doesn't have a confirmed market cap. However, apparently the fully diluted is approximately 250 million. I could not find uh, any confirmed uh, market cap on this. Unfortunately, no matter what website you look on. Um, However, the chart, it really doesn't look good. Let's just be honest. I mean, your oscillators, while they do look extremely undersold by themselves, I don't think that's anything you can take to the bank because, you know, we've been heavily undersold and you might have been like, oh, here's the right time to buy. And then, you know, once we were heavily oversold, if I zoom in, we were heavily sold on our oscillators right here. And we had a 42% bounce. So, I mean, you know, we do have these bounces coming in whenever we do get extremely oversold. There was no bounce here, there's no bounce here. We were oversold here, there was a bounce, oversold here. And we had a 10% bounce. The rest of the time we were here. This was actually a, we had a dump and then we had a pump on this bounce. So from the dump, this was only up 12.5%. So I really don't think the risk adjusted returns are in your favor if you do plan on DCAing every time uh, the oscillators do come down to lower time frames. I would honestly say trading VPAD, it, you'd probably want to wait for a reversal. I think because VPAD and you know the MM crypto community is such a, a tight-knit community of degenerates. I imagine once we do pop over the top of these uh, these EMA ribbons, I could imagine we'd flip them and go on at least a somewhat decent rally, even if it is a lower high before we do come back down again. You know, I do think VPAD is long overdue a rally at some point. Does this mean that I'm going to DCA into uh, to VPAD right now? Absolutely not. And this is coming from someone who got in for free and sold all their tokens at one dollar fifty. I'm not even con I'm not even um somewhat convinced to get back in for an 83% discount. As far as I can tell, looking at your momentum indicators, the daily squeeze mom is I mean, we're just having a huge, huge bearish shift. We've never been bullish on your momentum indicators. So I feel like trading this purely based on momentum is probably the best thing to do. So Hypothetically speaking, if we have a reversal out of absolutely nowhere, where is the point where you can have a more so confirmed trend reversal? Well, if we blast out of here, let's say we're out of here in the next week, which seems a little bit euphoric to me. A back test of approximately 36 cent and a push up to around the 40 cent region, in my opinion, that would be a confirmed breakout and potentially a trend reversal. We have literally not managed to get above these EMAs at all. So once again, I think the trend is your friend. Even coming over to the four hour, I I, I I was somewhat convinced saying maybe a four hourly break would work, but you can see sometimes we have these wicks. So I feel like if you want to take this day by day, maybe we should look at this on the four hourly estimated moving averages, wait for a break of the four hourly, and then wait for a break back down move into the four hourly EMAs to retest them because as you can see we move up and we fall right back down we've never no, no matter on what time frame no matter if you're looking at the daily or the four hourly I don't even want to look at this on the one hour on my channel I mainly try and catch trades based on macro momentum shifts I don't really try and catch you know very very small 
moves to the upside and the downside, upside, downside, upside, downside. I, I try to catch these macro market swings, uh, which are much more safer than, you know, trading based on the day to day price action, in my opinion. So, you know, like I said previously, four hourly, we tried to flip the EMA ribbons, completely failed. You can see here we tried to flip, failed, tried to flip, failed, tried to flip. We tried to hang around here, like we really tried. And this is why I say in my videos, you know, I, I'd want a flip, a retest, and then a push up. Because if you buy after it's started to push up on a retest, it's it's much less unlikely that it's going to do something like this and then fall over. Like, you know, it is still possible. But, you know, there's many, many times where you break out and you come back down to back test and you just completely fall through it. So I'd be waiting for a back test. Uh, I could definitely see myself picking up some uh, some VPAD uh, for a short term trade. I don't necessarily think this is something I want to hold for the long term, and I also don't think it's something that I want to DCA into uh, while this literally. I, you know, I normally say the saying like a, a falling knife, but it, it's I've got to think of a better saying because it's it's worse than a falling knife. It's it's like it's like trying to catch a bullet in my opinion i mean you, you might just want to not try and catch the bullet to be honest because as far as i can tell this is moving down very very quickly so you know if if you were considering this a falling knife i would say it was probably a knife that has fallen out of one of the apollo 13 shuttles in space and it is falling down to earth with huge huge gravitational force do you want to put your hand out and try and catch that I don't want to try and catch that. I'm not going to be trying catching this uh, this V-pad bottom. I'd much prefer to buy a confirmed breakout. Like I said, is it really the worst thing to buy a confirmed breakout of 36 cent when this has fallen from $2.50? No, it's not. And if we be conservative and we wait, you know, maybe it will be another month down the line, we would have had another crash. And then at which point we'd be saying, okay, we're looking for a break of, you know, 25 cent now. So, you know, I'm going to wrap up the video here. The trend is your friend until the end. This is a pretty clear-cut uh, chart that is very, very bearish. All the bear, all the momentum is in the favor of the bears. Your oscillators are absolutely beat down. They're slapped down. They've got no strength right now, and I just don't plan on a... Uh, on blindly DCAing something like this. So that's all I've got for VeChain. Don't get me wrong, at some point this will be the greatest short term trade potentially of all time. However, right now it's a falling knife. I'm not gonna try and catch it. If you're gonna try and catch it, you know, put put your oven mittens on, have your risk uh have your risk management in play. But that is all I've got for you for uh for VPAD slash V launch. Uh, yeah, as always, none of this is financial advice, just my opinion on the market. If you did want to join the Cowboy Discord, the link will be in the description. It is a place for my community to share laughs, share memes, time-sensitive information, time-sensitive news, and yeah, all of that cool stuff. So if you want an invite to that, the link will be in the description of this video. This is all I've got for you for VPAD. If you want me to cover this more, let me know in the comments below. As always, Cowboy out, not financial advice, and yeah, peace.